Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new Mod Spotlight. Today, taking a look at Laser.io. Laser.io is a brand new mod by me, Direwolf20. Uh, very excited to share this with you guys today. Uh, Laser.io is a mod that originally started as a logistics pipes style mod that I called Logistics Lasers, but I didn't really get around to finishing it, and there were some, some things that I could never really quite get right and things that I didn't like about it. Um, and then over the last year or so, I've constantly been seeing people asking for a new version of Ender.io pipes. Everybody loved Ender.io pipes. Uh, and I said to myself, you know, I could turn that Logistics Lasers mod into an Ender.io pipes mod and just tweak it a little. I think I could do that. So I started. And here we are. We have the first release of Laser.io. So Laser.io currently allows you to route items around inventories in a very controlled manner. There's a lot of configuration options. There's a lot of things that you as the player get to control and define about how the items get routed around. Once this release version comes out, which it is now available for you guys to play with, it's up on CurseForge and you can get it. It's also in the Direwolf 20 pack, though the version that's in the Direwolf 20 pack currently is a little bit old, but it'll be updated soon. Uh, but once I've got, you know, this version with all the items really nice and stable and in a good place, I'm going to start adding fluids. I'm going to start adding uh, RF or energy-based, you know, uh, transportation. And then finally, I'm going to add redstone control. And then uh, at that point, the mod will be pretty much done. As you can see, it comes with a patchouli book. So you guys can read all about it and see the details of how everything works. But for now, let's get started taking a look at laser IO. So I'm not going to flip through the patchouli book, uh, though I will occasionally reference it just to show you guys how it looks. Let's go ahead and look in JEI here to see what laser IO is all about. The first thing you're going to need is a laser node. This is the most important part of the uh, of the pa of the mod because it does a ton of cool things. Now to make these, you're going to need some laser connectors, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then the main crafting resource for this mod is the logic chip. Literally every other item in the mod comes from the logic chip, including the patchouli book and all the other components. So literally everything comes out of this logic chip one way or another. And the logic chip is pretty easy to make. You just smelt up a raw logic chip, which is made with quartz redstone dust, clay, and gold nuggets. And luckily you get four raw logic chips per craft there. So it's really not too bad to get a good amount of raw logic chips, but you do have to get in the nether in order to access that quartz. Um, so once you've got the uh, node in the world, what you'll notice about the node is it can interact with adjacent inventories. And to do that, you just place any inventory next to it. Um, now each side of this node has its own set of a three by three grid. A total of nine items can fit in here. And you'll notice that there's tabs along the top for all the different sides of the block. So up, down, north, south, west, and east. And this side happens to be the east. If I were to right click on this side, it would be the west. And if I right clicked on this side, it would be the up. And if I right clicked on this side, it would get, get the idea. Uh, so the nice thing is, is maybe if there's an inventory below that you need to access and it's not easy to get to that thing, you can just simply right click on it and, and hit down and you'll be able to access the, the inventory there. Now, by themselves, nodes do absolutely nothing and they're completely pointless. However, if you want to do something cool with them, it's pretty easy. Just get yourself an item card. Uh, as mentioned, there will be fluid and energy cards, but they do not have any recipes yet because there's really nothing uh, that they can do. They are just placeholders for future versions. The item card is where it's all at. So item cards, if you right click them, you can access their user interface and there's a bunch of settings in here. We're going to talk about all those settings in this spotlight. Step one to use the card is to place it inside of the uh, of the of the laser node and you'll notice that it suddenly shows a laser connecting between the node and the inventory that it's next to if there is no inventory that it's next to so for example if there's not a chest there it won't draw a line if the block next to it doesn't have an inventory it won't draw a line if the blocks next to it can only support fluids but not items it won't draw a line it will draw a line for fluid cards once they're implemented, but you get the idea. Uh, if you want to edit the settings of the item card, you can right click the item card from within the UI here and it'll jump right into that item card screen. Or you can modify the right item card settings from within your inventory, whatever works for you. You can also right click the card into it and it'll automatically insert itself into the block. Pretty cool. Configuring this card will allow you to control what it does. By default, it's in insert mode, which means that it will be allowed to put items into the adjacent inventory. We can change it to extract mode, which means it pulls items out of the adjacent inventory. Extractors will try and pull items out of the inventory and then find an insert card to insert into. 
Finally, there's stocking mode, which kind of works like the opposite. It's going to scan all the inserter cards in the entire network and try to pull items out of them and fill this inventory with the required items. Let's start with a very simple system. We're going to look at extract mode first. In extract mode, it's simply going to extract items out of this inventory. However, you're going to quickly notice that it's not able to extract anything because it has nowhere to send anything. We need to have an inserter card ready to go. Let's put one in the chest right down here. So we can easily access the top of this block, but then switch to the downside. And if we go ahead and drop an insert card in here, we'll notice that suddenly things start happening. If we take a look inside this chest, we'll notice that it's starting to receive cobblestone. And if we look inside this chest, the cobblestone's being extracted. Nothing too surprising for anybody who's played modded Minecraft before. Now to open up this card, we can change how frequently that happens. The first number over here is the transfer amount. That's how many items per operation this extractor card will extract. So currently it's set to one, which means that it's extracting one item every operation. Underneath that is a setting for how, many, uh, how quickly the operations occur. So transfer speed determines how many ticks between each operation. So the current settings are that it extracts one item every 20 ticks, AKA one item every second which is pretty accurate and pretty much what we're expecting and seeing here. If we were to go ahead and drop these guys back in here, we'll notice that it kind of keeps going. You'll also see that it shows nice little particles to indicate the items are being moving through here. And if you look closely at the lasers, you'll see the lasers kind of moving out of the chest and into the node for the extractor card, but it's moving out of the node and into the chest for the inserter. It's even more apparent if we switch this from extract to insert, all I have to do is open up the card here, flip it back to insert, and you'll notice it's moving in the opposite direction. So it's pretty obvious at a glance what this car, uh, card is doing to this inventory. Now, if we wanted to extract more quickly, it's easy. We just left click on the transfer amount number and it'll start going up. Right click to send it back down. If I want it to extract four items at a time, not a problem. Just go ahead and do so and you'll notice it's now extracting four items at a time. The most you can go up to is eight, unless you wanna upgrade your cards, which we'll talk about next. Card overclockers are a pretty useful tool. It allows the cards to operate more quickly. Uh, simple recipe just needs a bit of gold and the cards can operate a little bit more quickly. Uh, we talked about transfer amount, which can go up to 10 and the minimum transfer speed or how quickly they can operate is at least 20. However, this number can absolutely go up. If you bump it up to let's say 100, it'll operate every five seconds. And we'll notice that by putting this in here. There's just a little delay that occurs and every five seconds, it's gonna extract those eight items. And you'll notice that pretty much continues to happen. Now, like I said, if we wanna bring it down, we can also shift click to bring this number down and you'll notice it goes down by 10 at a time. Regular clicks go one at a time, shift clicks go 10 at a time, and control clicks go 64 at a time. Pretty cool. You can also shift and control at the same time to bump it up by 640. Uh, the most it can go up to is 1200 ticks. And the minimum is 20. If we install one overclocker card in the upgrade slot in the top right there, we can now actually reduce the uh, tick delay all the way down to 15, and we can increase the transfer amount all the way up to 16. And by doing so, we'll notice that we can now transfer 16 items every 15 ticks. So much quicker. Further upgrade cards allow further upgrades, so we can bump it now up to 32 and 10, which will do 32 items every 10 ticks or 32 items every half a second. The third upgrade, as you maybe can guess, is 48 and five. Now it'll do 48 items every five ticks, which is a quarter of a second. And the final upgrade will allow you to go up to 64 and down to one, which means it will transfer 64 items every tick. Pretty darn quick, if I do say so myself. Boom, boom. So card upgrades are going to be super, super useful. Uh, just shift click them in there and it'll put all four in right away for you. Oh, and don't think that you can sneaky set this to 64 and one and then remove the card overclockers because what will happen is it'll immediately flip back to eight and 20. Now this mod is all well and good, except wouldn't it be a lot cooler of us if we could transport items more than a block away? Well, don't worry, we totally can. Let's go ahead and set this up by placing another laser node somewhere nearby. All we have to do is get out a laser wrench and we can now connect two nodes. Shift right click on one node and it'll highlight green. Then right click another node and it'll connect it. Nice and easy peasy. We can now go ahead and install the same up inserter card right here that we had before and items will transfer. Just as a reminder, we're back to eight and 20 here. So if we throw these stacks in there, it'll transfer eight items every one second over to the adjacent inventory all the way over here. How cool is that? 
There is a max range on these cards, by the way, and that is eight blocks. So let's go ahead and set that up. So if we tried to make this connection here, it'll warn you, connection exceeds a maximum range of eight. If you would like to connect further than eight and don't want to spend the expensive amount of resources to build a node, you can use a laser connector, whose primary purpose is connecting uh, distant objects. So we can now right click to the connector, and then we can bind to the connector and click to this guy. And you'll notice that that connection point works just fine. And just like we had before, I'm gonna go ahead and set up an extractor and an inserter card, like so. and items will be transferred across. Now, as you might expect, you can connect multiple blocks to multiple points. There really isn't a limit. Uh, so simply doing this, I've now connected these two nodes to each other. Now let's set up a second insert chest and see what kind of fun we can have with some logistical routing. I'm simply gonna go ahead and place the inserter card in here. By default, when an extractor card is trying to extract items from a chest, it's going to try to place them into the nearest inserter card that it can find. That's just a straight distance. So I don't care if there's you know 16 different connections that lead to it, whichever one's closest physically in the world is the one that's gonna be the first destination. This one is currently set up and so is this one to both insert. So if we were to put, for example, dirt in here, it's gonna go ahead and send the dirt into that first chest. We can throw our cobblestone in there and it'll start sending the cobblestone to the first chest. If you wanna change this, inserter cards have a priority system in the same place that the extractor card had the transfer amount. So simply change the priority. Higher numbers of priority lead to the chest being considered first. So if I were to go ahead and put cobblestone in here now, we'll notice that all the cobblestone lands in this chest. Priority can go all the way up to 4096, I'm pretty sure. And the same system as before, shift, control, and shift, control, click to increase by significant numbers. You can also go all the way down to negative 4096 if you want. So I've set this inserter card to 10 and I've left this one down at zero, which means all items will make their way into the inserter card designated as the higher priority. However, we may want to filter certain items out, and luckily that's pretty easy to do, courtesy of a few filters that are available in the mod. The first and most basic filter is aptly named the basic filter, and it's pretty easy to use. Simply right click on the filter op to open up its UI. Also, once a car filter is inside a card, it will automatically show its user interface inside the card, so it's easy to access directly. On the top left are two options that you can change for filters, the allow mode or the deny mode. And in the center here are a bunch of ghost slots that you can go ahead and populate with items that you want to filter. You can shift click items into them and don't worry, it won't accept multiples of the same item. In addition, you can drag items out of JEI even if you're not in creative mode and allow it to put in there because after all, these are just fake slots and you won't be able to get the items back anyway. In allow mode, it tells the uh, inserter card that you're allowed to receive these items. So if you're extracting from the extractor card and stone shows up, it will be allowed into the inventory. In deny mode, it's the opposite. Anything but stone will be allowed in the inventory. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna set the allow mode to stone and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in this item card here. Now this chest can only accept stone. Even though it's the higher priority, it'll still get stone first. And as a note, since this one isn't filtered, if this chest were full, it would start showing up in this chest. However, if I place cobblestone in here, it's going to go into this chest over here because this guy's only allowing stone in. We can do the same exact thing on extractor sides. So if we put that filter on the extractor card and stuck some cobblestone in there, note that it's not being removed, but stone will. The other setting that you can toggle on the filter card is whether or not it's in ignore or match NBT mode. Those of you who've played modded Minecraft before and are familiar with item transfers should have a pretty good idea of how this works. In ignore NBT mode, all swords, for example, are the same, all netherite swords at least. So we can see netherite sword is in here. If we're ignoring NBT, it will transfer both a regular netherite sword that has no damage as well as a netherite sword with damage. 
However, if we want to make a differentiation between those two swords, we can turn on the match NBT setting, which means it will only send out fully repaired netherite swords, not ones with any damage on them. Note that enchantments and other things will also be affected by the comparison of NBT. You guys are probably, probably pretty familiar with how this works. The next setting I'd like to show you is round robin mode. By default, round robin is turned off, and everything you've seen so far is how round robin off works. However, if we turn on round robin, there's actually two different settings. First is round robin true, which means that it will try to alternate different inserters that accept these items. So currently there are no filters on either one of these. By default, before we saw everything was going into the chest with the higher priority. However, now it's gonna take turns, and it will split the stone stacks like so. And as we look in these inventories, we'll see that they're pretty evenly getting filled up with stone. So it's just taking turns sending four items at a time because I set the extract mode to set four transfer amount. And at the end of the day, we'll wind up with about 32 in one chest and 32 in the other. The next setting is a little bit more nuanced. If we take a look at this setting as it currently sits, and we were to, for example, fill this chest up with cobblestone, and tried to fit more stone in here. Currently there's room for eight stone here and all the stone over here. If we were to put a full stack over, it's gonna start taking turns, but then once this chest fills up, it'll put all the remaining stone over here. If we didn't want that for some reason, we could change this from regular round robin true mode to round robin enforced. What Round Robin Enforce does means it will forcibly take turns alternating items between inventories. So for example, once this inventory fills up, it will put it in here one more time and then wait until this inventory can be filled again. Let's demonstrate. What we'll see is it'll take out a few items and then pause. What happened is this chest filled up, then this one got the next four, and then this one was waiting and waiting and waiting. And it won't extract those items until there's room for them in this chest. And now it'll start going back and alternating. The next mode to demonstrate is exact mode. So when an exact mode is turned on, we ensure that we can pull out exactly the number of items designated over here by the transfer amount. So for example, if we had 12 items in here, note that it'll pull out eight and then it'll pull out four. That may not be the desired functionality. If you care about that, turn on exact mode. With exact mode, it will only pull out if eight items are available. So for example, if we put 12 stone in here, it'll pull out the eight and then it will not pull out any more until a total of eight pieces of stone are available, at which point it will extract them. The next type of filter I'd like to demonstrate is the counting filter. The counting filter accepts more than a single type of item. For example, if I shift click this cobblestone in here, it will have 64 cobblestone in the interface. In much the same way, we can drag items from JEI and we can also left click to increase the stack size and right click to decrease it. Just like before, shift to increase by 10, control to increase by 64, all the way up to, you may have guessed it, 4096. Middle click to remove it. However, some mods that use middle click overwrite this functionality. So if it's not working, it's probably a mod conflict. You can decrease it all the way down to zero. The counting filter has a use in pretty much every type of mode. So let's start with the insert mode. If you put a counting filter into insert mode, it's going to limit how many items can land in this insert chest up to the amount that's shown here. So currently we've got this card set up to extract. You may have guessed it. With round robin off, we're gonna put 64 items total in. Let's make sure that this has a higher priority. So I'm gonna make the priority over here 40, where this priority is now 10. You can see that this chest should get filled up first. If I put a full stack of cobblestone in here, it's gonna start filling up until we hit 32 items. At which point it'll stop filling this chest and start filling the next one. If this chest wasn't available, it just wouldn't have anywhere to put the cobblestone and the cobblestone would go nowhere. If we remove some, it'll start filling again. And it'll wait until there's more room. If we use a counting filter in extract mode, however, things are kind of reversed. What happens is it will extract up to 32 cobblestone and then stop. So it'll always keep 32 cobblestone available in the extract chest. Let's demonstrate by putting this cobblestone in here. You'll notice that it goes down to 32 and then stops. 
all the cobblestone went into here. And if we gave it more cobblestone, it would keep going. Until 32 remained. At which point it stops. Notice that counting filters do not have a deny mode because deny mode really won't work for counting filters. It doesn't make any sense to have it. Counting filters are always in allow mode. The next card setting I want to show you is the sneaky mode, uh, currently and by default set to default. You can also change the sneaky mode to up, down, north, south, west, and east. Let's take a look at what sneaky mode does. You may be familiar with the mechanics of a vanilla furnace where items should go into the top in order to get smelted. So you have to insert items into the top side of the block in order for them to go into the top side of the furnace. Inserting items into the side actually puts it in the bottom. So if we found ourselves some coal and place it in here, we'll notice that it starts going into the bottom. If we want to allow a furnace to be accessed from a different side, we can do that with sneaky mode. It's pretty easy. First off, let's take a look at what happens in the default insert mode. If we were to try to throw cobblestone in there, it would have nowhere to go because cobblestone won't fit into the side of a furnace. All we have to do is open up the UI here and change this to up. And now cobblestone will be allowed into the top of the furnace. So what we're changing here is which side of the adjacent block we're interacting with. The final type of filter I'd like to demonstrate is the tag filter. This is a pretty interesting one. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the more nuanced aspects of Minecraft, uh, many items have tags and it's pretty easy to see what the tags are. Uh, first off, open up the tag filter and you'll notice that there's a much different UI here. If we take a look at any kind of ingot, for example, we can place that in the top right slot. And like all other filters, this is a ghost slot, so it doesn't actually take the item. What happens on your screen currently is it will show you all the types uh, or all the tags that are on that item. So this item has the following tags, forge ingots, which are all the ingots currently in your mod pack, uh, forge ingots iron, which are all the items that are equivalent to iron, and then finally Minecraft beacon payment items. And you'll notice that lots of different items have lots of different uh, types. So you can see here, this one has a tag called Piglin Loved, uh, and it's a, just a list of all the different items that piglins like to accept, right? So these uh, items with, uh, all items have the forge ingots tag, all items that piglins will accept have the Minecraft Piglin Loved tag. And it's pretty straightforward. You can hit the uh, highlight one of these options and hit the plus button and it'll change from blue to black. Black means that that's actually saved to the tag. So items in blue are the ones that are not um, currently added to the tag and the ones that are in gray are added. You can remove the ones in gray by highlighting them and hit the minus sign. You can hit plus to add individual ones. You can shift click to add individual ones. You can hit the clear button here to remove all the ones that you've chosen. Uh, you can also uh, shift click ones you've chosen to remove them. And finally, you can shift click the plus to add them all. And you'll notice it clears the filter slot because there's no real reason to keep that item there once you've added all its tags. I can now clear and add these. If we want to, let's just add forge ingots. Now this tag filter accepts all forge ingots. So if I place the tag filter in here, and by the way, when you hold shift on filters, you can kind of see what items are allowed. So we can see 32 cobblestone on that. We can see stone on this, and we can see all the different ingots cycling through on this one. Kind of proud of that one. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what happens. If I throw iron in here, it's extracted. If I throw gold in here, it's extracted. If I throw mana steel ingots from Batania in here, it's extracted. If I throw elementium in here, it's extracted. If I throw stone in here, it's not. Tag filters do not show themselves inside the item card interface, but don't worry, you can right click them to jump into its own UI and see what's in there. If there's more than one page of tags, this page turner will allow you to cycle between the pages, and you can also turn on and off allow or deny mode. Note that the NBT setting doesn't make any sense in the tag filter, so it doesn't exist. Uh, however, allow and deny mode do exist, so you can deny all ingots, which kind of does the opposite. It will take anything that doesn't have those tags, but it won't take things that do. Pretty cool. So for the most part, we've covered all the buttons on this UI uh, for both insert and extract mode. 
except for one, and that's this guy right down here, which is the color white and the number zero. Let's take a look at that next. Uh, this is the channel system, which those of you who've used Ender.io may be familiar with. So simply click on it to increase the channel system by one, and you can go through all the colors of the Minecraft rainbow all the way up to 15, and when you get there, you'll hit zero again. You can right click to go up, or left click to go up, and right click to go down, and you'll notice that when you change the uh, color of the channel, it will also change the color of the laser in game. So we'll notice that this now has a red center laser instead of a white one. And we can change this to whatever color we want, and it works pretty well. Now these channels are used to filter which cards can talk to each other. Only two cards on the same channel can interact with each other. So for example, if we have one card uh, with the red channel and a different card over here with, let's say, the black channel, they will not be allowed to interact with each other. Um, and same for the white channel over here. So if I put items in this chest, even without a filter, nothing shall be extracted. Dun, dun, dun. Now let's go over here and uh, change our tag filter to allow only. And what I'm gonna do is stick that tag filter over here. Now this is on the black channel, which happens to be channel number 15. And you'll also notice this renders on the item card itself. So it's nice and easy to see on the item card which channel is accessible if you hold the shift button I should change the color of that channel mode because it actually shows what channel it is by color, but yeah, I could probably change that for black. But you get the idea. So now this is inserting on the black channel. There are no inserts on the white channel, which is why this card is not sending any items anywhere. If I change this card to the black channel, suddenly it's going to start sending the ingots over here. And even though this guy has no filter whatsoever, he can't get any items because he's on a different channel. Pretty cool. Now the final mode we haven't talked about yet is stocking mode. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna set everything back with no filters and set us back to all the same channel, which will be the first one, which is white. Uh, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate how stocking mode works now. In stocking mode, this card will try to find the resources you want from other chests in the network. We can start with the basic filter. By default with the basic filter, it's going to look for any and all stone that it can find. It will pull stone at a rate of eight items every 20 ticks, which will be increased the same way extractor mode works. So let's demonstrate. If we were to come over here and put the stone in here, you'll notice it's being pulled out of the inserter card. And we can do the same over here. We can put in some stone and it'll pull out of this inserter card as well once it's finished pulling out of the other one. Pretty neat. And it's just gonna fill this inventory up with as much stone as it can find everywhere in the, in the network. Uh, if we wanted to, we can uh, do a couple other things here. So exact mode works the same way as before. Uh, if we set it to exact mode, then what's gonna happen is it will only pull the stone if it can find exactly the amount it's looking for. So for example, transfer amount of eight. If I throw 12 stone in here, it's only gonna pull the first eight and the other four will sit there until four more are available. Once there's a total of eight in the chest, it will pull. Pretty cool. So uh, same thing with sneaky mode, same thing with channels, same thing with everything else. Allow mode doesn't really make sense. So even though the button is here, um, you know, sending it to deny mode, it, it won't actually do anything. So it won't pull things that don't deny. Uh, you really have to use allow mode if you're using stalker mode. So go ahead and make sure that when stock is enabled, you're in allow mode on your filter. The only reason this button stayed here is in case you accidentally put a filter that you already configured in deny mode into uh, the interface. I wanted you to see that it was in deny mode and then realize, oh, I made a mistake. So notice how it's only pulling the stone here. It's not pulling the dirt and it's not pulling the cobblestone. Now keeping in stock all cobblestone is nice, but the real bread and butter of this mode is the counting filter. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to keep 32 cobblestone in stock. Notice we already have a stack, but let's remove it. And it'll start showing up and grabbing the cobblestone out of the adjacent location. And it's only gonna pull 32. It won't pull anything else. Pretty useful. Now, if you set it to exact mode, the exact same thing happens as you'd expect. Uh, it worked just fine there because we had multiples of eight. Uh, but if we had less than eight available, so for example, five, it wouldn't pull any until uh, it was available with exact mode enabled, that is. So once exact mode is on, now it will refuse to pull until it has a total of eight available. And by the way, with the counting mode, it's whatever is smaller, the transfer amount or the total amount needed. Uh, so for example, uh, if we, you know, 
put in our overclockers here and bumped this guy up to 64 at a time, uh, and we said we wanted 32, then what happens is uh, if we you know, came over here and put 31 in, it's not gonna pull it until that 30 second is available, and then boom, it pulls all 32. And obviously, as you'd expect, if you have 64 in this chest, even though I have extract set to 64 per tick, since it only needs 32, it's only gonna pull 32. The final setting to talk about is regulate mode. So let's talk about what that does. Uh, if we were to have stocking mode enabled and we placed too many items inside this chest, more than the filter accepts, uh, it's going to have no problem with that because we're only saying, hey, keep 32 items in stock. However, if we enable regulate mode, which you'll note is only available on the stocking mode, uh, it's not available on extract mode, uh, regulate mode will say, hey, I would like to kick out any excess items. When I do that, any excess items inside the chest will be removed at the same rate as configured by the card. So in this case, eight items at a time. So if I threw an extra stack of cobblestone in there, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start extracting eight items every 20 seconds or 20 ticks um, and obviously change to 64 for one tick if you include some uh, overclockers and bring you back down to that 32 amount. So regulate mode will keep you at the value you want to be at all times. And mentioned as before, if you bump this up and bump this down, any excess cobble will be immediately removed. Boom. Regulate mode only works if there's somewhere for that item to go, so you'll notice the cobblestone have been going into some of the remote chests. If there's no destination available, it obviously can't extract it. And as you might have expected, you can interact with this UI in the same way. So if I were to open this up and bump this value up to 40, it'll immediately pull eight more cobblestone, provided, of course, that there's some available to satisfy that need. So easy peasy modification to make sure you have enough items in stock at all times. Let's have two stacks, please. Boom. Again, provided there's enough resources available. Before we wrap up the episode, let's use Laser.io to set up a really nice and automated way to smell items. Let's try it with a bunch of complex mechanics between filters and all kinds of other cool stuff. So let's say we wanna interact with a vanilla furnace. It's pretty straightforward. First off, I'm gonna set up an item card over here who's set to only accept on the black channel uh, a basic item type of coal. And that's gonna sneaky on the north side. So it's going to access the side of the block. Technically, we can leave it in default here because we're already on the side of the block. So we'll leave it on default for now. So coal will go onto the side of the block as an insert only on channel 15. I'm also gonna set up another item card in here and we're gonna put this on the red channel and this is gonna be smelted items. And then we're going to go ahead and throw a basic filter in here and let's accept things like cobblestone. That sounds good. We're gonna insert them to the top. Those of you who are familiar with vanilla Minecraft know that it's probably uh, the case that pulling items out of a furnace happens from the bottom side. So now let's go ahead and throw a third card into this side and say on the green channel, eh, let's make it a different channel, let's go brown. Uh, we're gonna go with brown channel and we're gonna access the down slot here and we're going to filter out only smooth stone. Sound cool? Okay. Should be easy peasy. Now to uh, go ahead and extract from these, remember we have to match the channels, so we're gonna need three extractor cards to make this happen. Do you need to do this with different channels? No, it could be all the same channel, but for demonstration of channels, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. But then we'll change it to all use the same channel. Sound cool? So let's go ahead and put three item cards in here. Uh, the first one, the second one, and third, you're going to insert on brown, and then you're going to extract on black, and extract on red. Now, as you know, I'm not setting up any filters on the extracts because I filtered on the inserts. We could have easily set up the filters on the uh, extracts, but it doesn't matter. Sound cool? Let's see if I set this up correctly. All I need to do is connect these two inventories, and then I'm gonna throw some cobblestone and some coal. Let's see what happens. Oh, right, I forgot to connect you. Boom, now you're gonna work. Hey, look at that, it's working. Cool. And you'll notice as it smelts, it's going to extract the stone on the brown channel. Make sure to set it to extract, and then away it goes. Pretty cool. Ah. 
And don't forget, you can easily increase the extract speed if you want, all the way up to eight, unless you throw some overclockers in there, and then you can go even higher. Looking pretty good to me. Now let's take a look at the last item we haven't checked out yet, and that is the node overclocker. Uh, you'll notice these things extracted pretty smoothly. However, however, uh, if we wanted to extract even faster, we could put some overclockers in here. And we could put some overclockers in here. And if we put these items in here, watch what happens. I'm actually going to bring the transfer amount down to one just to demonstrate this functionality. Notice how it extracts all the coal first, and then it starts extracting all the cobble. What if there was a way we could make both cards happen at the same time? So the mechanics of this block is that only one extractor or stalker card can happen in the same game tick. So when cards are set to operate one tick at a, at a, uh, at a pace, it's going to extract all the items from the first card first, and then all the items from the second card second. If we reversed these, it would do it in the opposite. So the red channel is where the cobblestone comes in, and the black channel is where the coal goes in. So you'll notice it'll reverse, and now cobblestone goes first. So basically, this card goes and operates first. Technically, this one would, but inserters don't actually do any operations. So this is the first one to operate, this is the second one. If you want these two cards to operate in parallel, it's as easy as adding a node overclocker. A node overclocker gives these two cards to operate at the same time in the same tick. Let's go ahead and see what happens now. Notice that it's extracting from both cards at the exact same time. Pretty nifty. Each node overclocker installed in a uh, node here will allow more cards to be operated at the same time. So with one node overclocker installed, two cards can operate at once. Um, if we wanted to throw, for example, another one of these guys on channel red, uh, and we set this to extract, and we brought him down to one transfer speed. We'll notice that there's now four lasers coming out of this thing. Uh, and if we were to put a bunch of cobble and whatnot in here, notice how only two are running at once. If we were to go ahead and add a second node overclocker here, notice now three channels are operating at once and the cobble emptied out almost twice as fast as the coal did because basically we were pulling out two cobblestone per tick. If you sit down and do the math on this, fully overclocked, you can technically transfer nine stacks of items per tick, which is pretty obnoxiously fast. Now, as mentioned, if you wanted to, you could pretty easily uh, change this up. By the way, you can craft cards by themselves and they will empty themselves and reset themselves. Same for filters. So if we craft a filter by itself, it'll reset itself. Um, the cards and the filters and all that stuff, everything comes back out. So if you had a filter in your card and you had overclockers, when you craft it by itself, you'll get both back. So technically we could do this with a simple extract on white. So let's set that up. Eight items at a time, that should be good. And over here, I'm gonna turn both inserters into the white channel. And notice, obviously without overclockers in it, it's a little bit slower, but it'll extract all the coal and put it in the correct filter slot. And then it'll extract all the cobblestone and put it in the correct filter slot because they're both going into the white channel, but their filters are controlling what they're allowed to accept. So lots of different ways you can do this. The main reason I did it with multiple channels was to demonstrate how node overclockers work. You now know that. If you ever get lost, reference LaserIO 101. It'll tell you how all the nodes work. It'll tell you how all the connectors work and all that kind of cool stuff. All the card mechanics are listed in the card mechanics chapters. There's basics in here that show you the inserter UI, the extractor UI, and the stocking UI with links to each option here. There's also a whole chapter on the filters and the way they work. So feel free to flip through the book uh, I think I covered everything. I mean, I wrote the mod, so I hope I covered everything. I guess we'll find out if I didn't. For now, Double Twice signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the spotlight of Laser.io covering how item transfer works. I have lots more planned for this mod. Uh, I want to add fluids, energy, and RF. And then I have a few other cool things planned that I hope you'll enjoy. Um, for now, like I said, Double Twice signing off. Take it easy.